ladies and gentlemen, from the Twitterverse, Adam Nutter joins us, libertarian comedian. And the host of uh, nerds and nerds with words. I love it. I love it. I'm, man, you're gonna you're gonna bring out so many bad jokes in me today. Nerdiness and wordiness. Okay, I'll stop right there, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome, Adam Nutter, to the show. How you doing, brother? Don't have audio for you. Can you is, is your mic muted? There? there you go. It All was right. muted. I was being right. polite, and I forgot because I had brain damage. I was saying <laughs> I'm as good as I can be not going outside and doing comedy, but uh, <laughs> hanging out inside is just as good, I guess. So where, where are you calling from today, Adam? Uh, right. Well, I'm originally from Staten Island, New York, uh, the actual trash epicenter of the city of, uh, of, of New York City. But now I live outside of Philly, uh, Newtown, like 30 minutes outside of Philly. Wait, wait, 30, 30 minutes outside of Philly. Like, that's, I mean, if you start in the center of Philly, if you drive for 30 minutes, you don't get to the edge of the city in rush hour traffic. <laughs> that is how, true. Far, <laughs> how far out of the city is 30 minutes out of the city? You say, like, because, like, when I say, like, because I live near Ash Fork, Arizona, which is a census designated place. It's not even a city legally, There's no town, nothing, right? You go 30 minutes out of Ashford, that's 30 minutes of dirt road you're down out of the way. <laughs> you say you say 30 minutes out of Philly like you're trying to score hey, points man, with me and it's I'll not working. I'll defend it. I'll defend it and I'll tell you why I defend it. Because Philly <laughs> technically outside of like Center City is still considered Philly. So like uh, North Philly is Philly. And as soon as I hit North Philly on I-95, that's technically Philly. And that's about 30 minutes into my ride. If I want to get like further to where like where, where our studio is, that's like 45 minutes. <laughs> That's a little more. <laughs> so, well, well, I mean, what's it, what's it like? What's, what's your, like, you give it, what's your coronavirus logistical situation? Like, I, what kind of house are you in? What's your daily routine? Well, you wearing a mask inside like a good little slave? Fuck no, man. I, <laughs> listen, we're all libertarians here. If I have to go to a store and the store is like, put a mask on, all right, I have to respect that or not go to that store, right? But every store is doing it, so it's like, well, I either want to eat food <laughs> or not eat food, like you know what I'm saying. So, like my wife, of course, she's um, my wife's a Republican, so she's also anti-mask stuff, oh, which really? is good. So, so, I'm so but sorry. But I know, but uh, I have to combat other stuff with the wife, and my dog's of course <laughs> losing his shit right now. Uh, <laughs> but hey, come on. <laughs> uh, but pick no, I'm, I'm <laughs> yeah, pick your battles, dude. Um, I'm I'm anti-mask with a lot of the stuff. I'm sure as most people are. When you look at like the science of it, and you're like, huh, no one's dying, and like, <laughs> you know, the cases are going up, but deaths are going down, and also like, are cases going up? I don't know, probably not. I just saw Texas had to withdraw like three thousand COVID cases because they were lies. It's are they like, actually, wait, wait, wait. Are you are you saying? <laughs> Someone in the government admitted that they were wrong about something. Yeah, right. It's almost like the government is uh, lying to us all the time, or something like that. It's weird. <laughs> or how about this? People are getting murdered, or get bringing brought in as COVID deaths, or like car accident victims are being brought in as COVID deaths, and then yeah. the families had to be like, "Hey, man, uh, he died from a car accident," and the hospital's like. No, we put it as a COVID death, though. And the family's like, but we have to now sue the hospital <laughs> to, like, get a justified death certificate? That's crazy, man. Like, what's yeah. crazy? What's going on? Yeah. And then, like, you find yourself arguing, like, with your friends who you thought were rational people forever. And then they're the first ones to be like, oh, we have to keep it shut down six more months. We have to, we have to put the mask on. It's like... Do you have all the money in the world that you don't care about working? I don't understand. <laughs> like, how is this so easy for people to say? You know, part of the part of the danger, like the the the, the sort of psychological insidiousness of the situation, is that 
it gives everybody an excuse that they can grab at any time to do anything they want. And not, not literally anything, but do you want to stay at home and not work? Okay. You have the, now you're not, you are no longer a lazy piece of shit. You are now a conscientious citizen. <laughs> right. <about> grandma. <laughs> right. Right. It's, it's, I also love this too. The, uh, also the pretty blatant, obvious answer to all of this, instead of giving out money to everybody, by the way, thanks for taking our money. We pay ourselves money. People don't get that too. It's like, you think the government doesn't have a job. The government's job is to take your money. People think the government walks in with a lunch pail every day and like punches a <laughs> nine to five clock like the fucking Flintstones. And it's like, go to my job. And like they go to like hit railroad spice into the goddamn ground. No, their job is to fuck things up and take your money. Like that's their job. Like my job is to go out and try to make you laugh. And guess what? If I don't do that, I don't get paid. But the government <laughs> cannot do their job and still get money from you. <laughs> like that's their literal job like i don't understand so when when we got a stimulus check it's like cool i just gave myself twenty four hundred dollars that i could have just earned <laughs> like but again my wife again is republican i give her shit for that but i will say she is at least on the right side of this where she's like i didn't want to stop working she's like i want to earn my paycheck she's like i'm not looking for a free hand i'm not even free hand I'm, I'm looking i'm looking for my own money paid back to me like you know we want to go out there and, and and earn a paycheck like we're supposed to you know yeah. so what should have happened again not not i'm not for this but i'm just saying the obvious would have been well if you are vulnerable or you can't work then stay home and we'll pay you and then everyone else who can go out and be, do as you would isn't that the obvious uh, well in order to accept that obvious you have to accept a lot of the bullshit uh premises of government in the first place right like that they should be running <laughs> insurance no i mean if, uh, private insurance should be and com and community and charity based insurance should be of taking course. care of people a lot better on a, a more appropriate needs based system but if i may make fun of your wife a little bit more here please Adam, i do um, <laughs> you know, even, even this even this mentality of like, I want to work to earn a paycheck. I I, I want to earn a living and you know put on my blue collar and do my job. And I you know like even that is backwards. Even that in and out. Now you're like, well, well, wait a second, Adam. There's 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 a certain nobility and and contrib you know desire to contribute with that. And, and this is true. But think about that mentality of I want to go out and work and have a job as opposed to I want to be wealthy and organized and I want to be an entrepreneur and an independent actor and I want oh, to have yeah. a meaningful career and sure. I don't want and, and I, I want economic freedom. Sure. Like that because the, 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 this is and, and, and you've, you've probably heard me rant on this before, but that it, the, the idea that we are going for 100 percent unemployment is completely <laughs> backwards. We should be going, and it's not, un, the, the opposite of employment is not 100% uh, employment. I'm not saying it's 100% unemployment. No, it's 100% retirement. Right. <laughs> Our goal should be every American has the wealth and financial mm -hmm. security and independence for work to be optional. And, you know, we were talking about reparations now, 40 acres and a mule. And it's kind of like, <laughs> well, hey, why not reparations to everybody who's ever been a victim of this tax system? Right? right. Why not give everybody all this land that the federal government owns, right. give it back to the people? You know, you want to start with victims of, of slavery who are sure. I yeah. You All right. I don't care. You know, and I've heard these arguments against reparations. Well, why should I as a white guy today have to pay for slavery that I had nothing to do with and I never benefited from? I don't have any wealth. I've been poor. And I've come back. And, blah, blah, blah. and it's like, yeah, OK, guess what? Government is sitting on a shit ton of money and wealth and land that they stole from all of us. And a lot of that did come out, you know, was whipped out of poor black folks. So, you True know, that. if you want to yeah. take that into account, I'm okay. But if you want to say, hey, we need reparations, then let's look at the institution, the people who have profited from taking advantage of everybody else. And you have to look beyond race on that. But yeah, look, what your wife is going for, I got to have a job. Like, well, nah, I mean, here's, nah. and by the way, you are right. And like, You're I, right, so I, one I was definitely, another. I was definitely oversimplifying the, the thought right? because I'm the same way. Like I don't want to just sit home and do nothing and get free, mo free money. Right. So I, that's why when I say like, I, it feels good to go out, 
make people laugh and be like, here's money for the thing you did, right? Like any, like the, yeah. like the old libertarian adage of like, I hire you for a service, for voluntary service, and I pay you for that service. And if it's done well, you get money, and then we all both have a reciprocation. That's what I'm talking about, right? Like I want to go do a service, which is to make you laugh. Hopefully, make you fucking idiots laugh, and I, you know, and then you guys give me money, and then if I don't, then you guys be like, "You suck." And I'm like, "I know," and I go home. Like, you know, it's that's how that works. So that's what I mean when like go out and make a living. Like, I don't want to just wait, sit. Wait, home, hold on, you know? hold on. I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to call you out, Kyle Canadian <laughs> style, because I'm pretty sure all you're doing is taking advantage, trying to capitalize on a personality quirk. Someone at a party once said. Hey man, you're pretty funny, and you're like, yeah. You want to give me twenty bucks? That's dude. I wish that was the case. It's because I got bullied. And I was fucking depressed my whole life. That's that's why I became a comic, dude. I okay. wish it was because people were like, you're funny. <laughs> yeah, I was funny. <laughs> sure. Oh shit, man. Sounds like I got fucking bullied because I like Spider Man. Definitely oh, not well, because hey. of that. Yeah. Well, hey, if you want to finish your thoughts on anything else that I've interrupted on. Go ahead. But man, if you could get into that, I'd love to hear about the dark path to comedy you've experienced. It's listen, man, it's a okay, so this is fun for you and your listeners. I, I again growing up in New York City, I was 18 years old. I love stand-up comedy, I love comedy in general. I was a kid. I did my very first open mic at uh, uh, the comic strip in New York City, which is still a club there. It's garbage club, no one goes there, but it still it still is there. Um, I loved it. I did comedy for like a year. Or a year and a half, and then I did that dumb young kid thing, man, where I was like, "Oh, I don't know if I can make money from this, you know." I'm like, "What do I do in my life? I don't know." You're 19 years old. I didn't know anything. You're dumb. I hated bullies because I got bullied a lot. I love com- this is before comic books were cool, man. Like comic books are cool now. People just are like, "Oh, I like Spider Man." I had to earn that nerd badge, dude. I had to beat up for it. I got beat up for that shit. <laughs> like I got beat up for that Batman. So, like, I grew up loving all that shit. I grew up playing football. I was a big football player, too. No matter how good I was, I still got bullied because I love Spider-Man. This is true. So, like, at 18, I was like, I'm going to learn how to fight. I started doing MMA. I did that. So I got my confidence up. I learned how to fight. And then um, at 21 years old, I hated bullies. And I was under the impression that cops help people. And I became a fucking New York City police officer. Yeah. This guy. I know. Uh, I did that for a little bit. I would a little bit in. I was like, "Oh, this isn't what I thought it was, right?" Like I got tricked because I also I I didn't know what a libertarian was at 21 years old either. So like I knew I wasn't a Republican. I knew I wasn't a Democrat, and I had these values in my head, but I didn't know where to take those ideas. I didn't know like what avenue to go down. I never really looked into it, and I really thought like the idea of police was like oh no you just help people like you help people get beat up you help and then you get on and they're like got you (laughs) like you fucking idiot you think you're gonna help people it's all about the opposite and then you just get in there and they're like no no no. inflict as much punishment as you can on the fucking public now i worked in staten island and i worked in a precinct that was like 98 percent white people so i didn't really have that discrimination or that problem wait wait the 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 Police staff was ninety eight percent white. No, oh, yes, but or I mean the area, the neighborhood. It's okay. in Staten Island, dude. So like, it was like, I mean, you had we had blacks and Hispanics and Asians, but it was pretty much all white. Like every every almost every single house I had to go to was a white house. Every interaction was almost a white family. So it was just like dealing with white trash. And I was like, well, I'm white trash. So it's just like it's just like dealing with myself, right? <laughs> so it's the same shit. Uh, but you know, in, you're in there and you're like, oh, this isn't. I gotta get the fuck out. Um, I guess, luckily, quote unquote, for me, I got into a bunch of car accidents on that job, and I got a bunch of brain trauma. And they were like, "You can't do this job anymore." I was like, "That's a good decision." But I was like, <laughs> I was like looking to get out. You know, anyway, like years before I got hurt, like before I even got hurt, I was still looking to get. I was like, "How do I?" And then I was like, "I was like, I, I'm like, I'm fucked myself because I'm like, well, now I have a kid." I need money. Like, what do I do? Do I go? I, I started doing comedy again, but like on the side. I'm like, well, I can't pay my bills doing this on the side. It's crazy, you know? <laughs> and then I had a bunch of brain trauma from football and MMA. And then I got into some serious car accidents on that fucking job. And that put me over the top. But the last car accident I got in, I got like knocked unconscious. It was, it was bad. 
And doctors are like, if you get hit in the head again, you could die. <laughs> like, don't get hit in your head, dude. And I was like, got it. So now I, uh, I avoid all head no, traumas. Hold on, hold on a second. About uh, the, these police accidents. These are accidents you're having in a police car. Yeah. <laughs> we got hit by drunk drivers twice. Like, shit like that, dude. Like, unlucky shit. Hold on. You say hit by drunk drivers. Were you aggressively chasing these drunk drivers? No, uh, we were like at a red three? light. And some guy just hit me. <laughs> okay, so it's just, just by virtue of being, like, nothing interesting or exciting. Just by virtue oh. of being out in the car driving a lot as a patrol cop you get in a car yeah, accident just driving around at midnight <laughs> fucking get hit i got hit by a drug driver twice and then the last one though uh we were actually going to like this uh apparently there's a big group fight in the middle of the street and we're just going to break it up and i was uh going like 30 miles an hour and some girl just walks out in front of my car and i was like i either kill this innocent woman <laughs> or i swerve and uh, I swerved, and I hit a light pole, and the light pole hit the car. The tire went flying. I got knocked unconscious. I woke up. The people like, around me, I was like, oh, this isn't good. <laughs> like, uh, yeah. But I don't – but, like, again, like, I, I – that was a real wake-up call into, like, the police state and the state in general and, the, and how government really operates. And, like, I, again, I was a young, dumb kid. I really didn't get it. Now I'm 33, and I'm so fucking flipped on everything. You know what I'm saying? It's just a – it's a real wake-up call. Anyway, after that, start doing comedy again. <laughs> so comedy full time for the last five years. Yeah. Now, and that's pretty and podcasting, I, yeah. Yeah, so I, I've I've wondered about this. You know, you're you're obviously you're you're really solid, you great stage presence. How do you make the the leap to I mean you 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 I, man, I'm just I'm Kyle Canaan jokes keep coming back to me. Right? <laughs> uh, He's great, you know, man. I love Kyle. This, this is being a comedian is not considered an essential survival skill. You don't not. see preppers, you know, hey there, after you're finished canning up those yams for the winter, don't forget we got to go into the city center and wrangle us a clown so that we can tee hee as the world crumbles <laughs> around us. Uh, and how do you, how is it that it, it seems in the, in the modern age, especially, you know, if you're not one of these breakout commercially successful comedy central HBO special, you know, back in stadiums kind of comedians. Are you there, Adam? I'm there. Yeah. Did I lose him or? Um, I'm pretty sure his phone overheated. Oh shit. Okay. So, uh, <laughs> so, uh, I, I mean, we'll, we'll let Adam refresh here and, uh, why don't you, uh, let everybody know while we have this opportunity, I'll, I'll get your sites up and let everybody know where they can find you, sir. Oh, yeah. If you guys uh, like my fucking nonsense, uh, check me out on Twitter and Instagram at Adam Nutter. Uh, I tweet a lot of shit, a lot of libertarian shit. I, I get into a lot of arguments with people because it's fun. And uh, and I also just talk a lot about comedy and sports on there, too. And yeah, so libertarians, comedy, and sports. It's pretty much my thing. So <laughs> follow me for all my stuff on my podcast. You can check out Nerds with Words. It's at NWWCast. I do my, my buddy Neil Wood. He's another comic, and uh, yeah, we just do. Uh, we just pretty much we talk about a lot of fucking ridiculous stuff, man. Two comics shooting the shit, talking about our lives, talking about ridiculous things. We just had a bit we did in our show talking about uh, Anne Frank, young adult author. If she survived the camps, maybe what would she write about? You know, <laughs> we we thought she write about vampires and werewolves. That's just us. <laughs> I don't know, man. Probably not. But uh, that's our thing. Uh, also, I do a sports podcast. If you're into sports, called uh, Slash Thick Sports. I do that with my buddy uh, Blaze Gagakis. He's a comedian, and we just talk about sports and comedy, and it's pretty well, much those I, two things. I guess I, I'll take over for Adam here for a moment because <laughs> uh, I was kind of listening to a little bit of your your bits. Uh, what is your what's your favorite bit? I mean, honestly, I mean, as a comedian, I'm sure you talk about some pretty controversial issues. So, what is your most I guess controversial that have you ever f faced any cancel culture issues or anything like that? I mean, as much as I talk about politics, like on Twitter and stuff like that, I, I don't really do it on stage because it's kind of hard and it's also divisive, right? It's like, it's like people will immediately like break this, what's the room. And like, I'm not a political comic, you know, like, like Dave Smith, he could do that. He's great at that. Right. Like, you know, but like, that's not my Avenue. Like I could, I could talk about, it, I could be funny in conversation. But if you're like, go write a 20-minute set 
about libertarian comedy. I'm like, ugh. All right, oh, yeah. I'll give it a shot. Uh, you know, I'll give it a shot. But it's not my thing. So I pretty much just stick to things I know, like stuff, stories that I've done. Like, uh, I have one bit. I, I, I don't want to do the bit that's lame. You know, I don't like doing bits on like, you know, podcasts and stuff. But the premise of the bit, it's a true story. I go to Mexico every year with my wife on vacation. And uh, I hate the TSA. I'm pretty sure we all do. <laughs> and, I, and uh, you know, they were giving me shit. And I made a whole big stink about it. And there's a twist to the story. You know, and it, it's shit like that where I like to do where it's like I get caught being an asshole, but I think I'm right in a scenario. And then the end is like, oh, I'm fucking wrong here, aren't I? <laughs> you know, it's like, ah. Oh. Or you I, talk I... about, you know, sex stuff. <laughs> Basic. I just uh, I just experienced the TSA myself and going to Orlando, but uh, Adam's back, so uh, oh, right. I'll, I'll I'll let it, I'll let you guys finish this one off, sir. But it was good good to talk to you. Sir. Yes, I think. Hey, thanks for covering for me. Yes. <laughs> so, Adam, you enjoyed being on Adam versus Hey, Adam versus the man with a different Adam, right? Uh, I hey, have awesome. phone. Adam, you know, sorry about that. This, this is. This is my phone overheating, and I like I look down, and suddenly it's like, oh, I got sweat spots on my shirt too. This isn't just a technical difficulty. This is now a hygiene difficulty. Dude, are you? Are you doing this? It's like a hostage video you're doing. You're like, like you're reading it. Like I am okay. I think uh, my phone overheated. I am not being held against my will as your eyes move back and forth. No, I, it's it's uh it's about 95 degrees here already in the mountains of Arizona today. So anyway. I, if, if you uh, if you want to just go back to right where we were, I, I, I was just, if I recall, I hope you heard the rest of my question there, but it was just, how do you make the leap to actually being personally, financially successful as a comedian today? Oh, uh, I don't know. It's a good question. I haven't done it. Uh, <laughs> when, I, when I do it, I'll let you know. <laughs> I, I think it's, it's, man, it's either like, you know, someone who hooks you up, right? And they, and they, and they take you along their coattails, you know? Or, or you grind it out and you, and you, and you go to club, you do the best you can. Like, honestly, the most money that I've realized I make is outside of the cities. Like, we set up our own shows in, like, the burbs and people just flock to them. And they'll pay, they'll pay ticket prices because, like, $15 even, $10. Because they don't want to go to, like, Philly. They don't want to go to New York. They don't want to go to whatever major city because they don't live in there, Right. So they're like, oh, wait, are you telling me that you're going to bring us the same exact comics that we would see in Philly here for a third of the price sold? <laughs> you know, so people will absolutely come like uh, I don't know if you know who Aaron Berg is. He's a great comic. He lives in New York City, but we brought him out to our show. We run in uh, Chalfont, which is right outside of Philly. Dude, sold out. People were like, oh, my God, thank you for bringing Aaron Berg out here. This is awesome. It's like shit like that. I make more money doing that than if I go to New York or I go to Philly. Cause it's so oversaturated and I'm not the funniest comic in New York city. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> so I'm going to, I'm down here in New York city. I'm fucking, yeah, every time I go there, I'm down, I'm no one. But if I go outside of the burbs, I, I produce a show and then I, I, you know, it's like, Oh, people come out. I make money. I get to do 15 minutes. It works out for everybody. So is that still happening in, in, Corona phobia? Are people still doing small comedy shows? I've done one show since Corona, and that was two weeks ago. Uh, we did it in New Hope, Pennsylvania, uh, at a place where we do shows all the time. Uh, John and Peter's. It's fucking great. It's a great place. If you're ever in New Hope, Pennsylvania, check it out. It's an awesome. It's an old music bar, but we also do comedy there. And it sucked because there was 30 people in the room, not even 25 maybe, because that's the capacity, right? Because they also had a uh, make room for the people at the bar and restaurant part. So down at the stage part, we had about 20 people and they were awesome. Like they were, they were there for comedy, but it's like, all right, I don't know. <laughs> you know, it's 20 people. It's like, it's not as like, usually that place has like 80 to a hundred people. It's, it's just, it's just a bummer. The, the question that raises for me then is with everything going virtual you know, and, and, and this is where I, I, I see it more and more difficult to compete as a comic, right? When there's uh you have to succeed on the internet first, right? Before you can even compete 
to, to promote for real life events. What's, why can't we do comedy all online? Doesn't work. Unfunny comics do. Hey, unfunny comics do Zoom shows. I'm telling you that right now. <laughs> if you fucking, not not all of them, but the majority. I'm telling you, I've noticed this myself, and I've talked about it with my co-host Neil Wood the other day. I've noticed a trend where all these comics pushing Zoom and virtual shows are the most unfunniest comics on stage you will ever see in your life. All these people who are like. Check out the Zoom show. Uh, I'm hosting the Zoom comedy show. It's great. I'm like, is it great? Because you're horribly unfunny on stage every time I've seen you. So what is <laughs> magically funny through a camera, you fucking hack? Like, it's, I'm telling you, the majority of these Zoom comedy shows are hack comics. And here's the reason. Comedy is 98% audience interaction, right? It's in the moment. It's it's about me gauging your your reaction. I'm feeding off your energy. You're feeding off my energy. That's gone virtually, right? Like, A, there's a delay. You just lost service with me. Like, imagine I lost service during a set. That's gone, dude. My whole, it's gone. Also, what is everyone's mic's going to be on? So I hear everybody's dogs bark. I hear everybody's fucking cough. I hear everybody's, right. Like, you know, so, all right. So then everybody mutes their mics. Okay. So then I don't hear laughter. So I just, I just see people going. (laughs) <laughs> or, or people are gonna laugh. They're just gonna, they're just gonna sit there and just do this and like, nod. It sucks. It fucking sucks. What are we talking about? Like, you can't do it. It's not doable. So I've been doing like a ton of podcasts to get out the, you know, the funny, just to get the funny out, and just that's been the avenue. It just doesn't work. It doesn't work. My my the my few funny friends who have done Zoom shows, they're like, I'm not doing another one. Like it's it's not it sucks. Like it's not the same. It's nowhere near the same. It just doesn't work. And I'm like, I knew it. That's why I knew it. I've turned down every one I, I got offered. I'm not doing them. Hmm. Well, I mean, I I, I like to think that I got into politics because I wasn't funny enough to do stand up. <laughs> and so this is my this is my opportunity. Like you know where like if if I was a stand up comedian, I would be a really bad annoying barely funny okay yeah that guy's cool kind of stand-up comedian right <laughs> that's most comics dude <laughs> you fit right but, in with everybody but if i'm an activist or a politician or a pundit man compared to bill o'reilly and rush limbaugh i'm funny as hell well, and, dude, that's and- the thing it's guys like you larry sharp who's i consider a friend of mine you know he's been on my po- i've been on his podcast a bunch he's been on mine a bunch guys like you have a sense of humor and could talk and also run in politics is like you guys have such a fucking advantage. It's crazy to me. And the, because we're libertarians, it's like no one gives a shit. <laughs> yeah, we have a huge disadvantage too. You know? like this 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 weird thing called integrity and desire to tell the truth. Like the fact and, that Larry Sharp things that make them uncomfortable to, to change the, how they think. The fact that Larry Sharp isn't the governor of New York right now is crazy. <laughs> like it's like he like it's just, it's a bummer that we have to combat this all the time, dude. Especially. All right, you want to talk about politics and comedy? What do you think? What do you think? Co- co- comedies full of Republicans and Libertarians? Nope. <laughs> full of fucking liberals, dude. I have to fight that so much. I, here's him. What I just ha- all I have to do is say something like uh, something as innocuous, something as crazy as like, "Well, I, I believe in freedom of association," and they're like, "You fucking racist." It's like, okay, okay. <laughs> it's simple as that as simple as that so i mean there's kind of an obvious and this is something that's as as a consumer of stand-up comedy this is something that is consistently bothered me that there is a distinct liberal bias in, in comedy beyond the general population and part of that just comes from i would assume the cultural nature of it being associated with, with, with urban areas. Is, is there more to it than that? You know what it is, dude? It's, I'll tell you what it is. It's unfunny. It, it, I, I keep, I'm beating a dead horse with what I say, but it's true. It's unfunny comics, right? Who can't succeed in comedy, drag down funnier people than them. That's all it is. So like the Shane Gillis thing with SNL, like that's all it is, is unfunny, failed, open my comics who can't do comedy, go after great comics who can do comedy and, and are succeeding what they couldn't succeed at. And they want to see them fall. That's all it is. That's all it is. 
It's nothing other than that because guess what? Legion of Skanks, like they they put they put on Skankfest every year, which is like arguably the best comedy festival in the world. And all these fucking alt comics who want to be like, oh, I'm against you know bad jokes and uh, and they're the ones secretly like, oh, I want to do Skankfest though. Oh, it's like, oh, you want to be involved in that, but you hate that though. You hate that comedy. <laughs> you hate that. You hate the. You hate free speech comedy, but you want to do it. Oh, weird how that works, huh? It's it's almost like we're better comics, and you just you you fell into this trap of like you thought you could succeed with being a social justice warrior in comedy, and you realize oh it's you can't. But too late, you already fucking went all in. Oh, yeah. you, you made your bed, dude, laying it now, you know. So it sounds like there's this temptation of weaponizing comedy just in the most convenient way for the individual. So if, if, if I may, I'm just kind of putting this together that like an individual comic who isn't naturally successful in their career, there's there's a temptation for them to use comedy as it's weaponized. As it, like his comedy is great as a weapon. It is. Right, not just as a tool to illuminate, to alleviate you know suffering or negative thoughts, or or to make light to actually bring light and joy into a situation, but it's also in a sense weaponizable as a as a means of ridicule, right? Especially politically, and and this is where like I I kind of feel sorry for Republicans, and I, I mean not really, it's the Republican <laughs> wing of the Socialist Party of America versus the Democratic wing of the Socialist, Socialist Party, Party of America. Yeah, of course, what one wing has a better sense of humor than the other, generally speaking? No, they do. You know, it's, that's it's okay. true. It's true. It is true. But that's the thing. I mean, not to cut you off, but like that is true. The left is generally unfunny. It's it just is true. I, like where I I consider libertarians like the middle for a lot of stuff because like I don't fall into that confirmation bias a lot of things, you know. And as a middle person to this comedy, I'm telling you, I've noticed the right. If I shit on the Republican side on Twitter, they're way more likely to be like, ah, it's funny, than the left. Now, the MAGA people will trash me, right? Like, for sure. They'll jump all over me, and just like the left will. But as a whole, I've noticed the right is way more like, ah, it's, it's funny, whatever. He's fucking around. The left is like, that's unfunny. Well, ah! yeah. well, hold on a second. Hold on a second. Because I see this in, like, different dimensions. In fact, I, I actually was going kind of the opposite way of this, as, as you seem to go. But I, I get that you're, you're right about, it. like, you know, the left can't mean. Right, oh and, and if God, you look at can. memes online, you go, "Wow, yeah." The, especially the alt right, and and you know the, the 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 you know alt conservative, whatever. Yeah, they have better memes. They have funnier memes. It's funnier. Funnier. <laughs> it meme. is. Yeah. They, and and when you when you talk about like SJW issues, <clears throat> you know it's the SJWs going, "Well, you can't laugh about that. That's too serious, right?" Well, that's you're not being politically correct. You can't laugh about. But then. You know, on on the flip side of the coin, you could also say, you know, there's there's the reverse stereotype that I think applies, you know, in other situations. I mean, you look at like, uh, I'm trying to think of like, a, you know, Alexandria Ocasio Cortez to use a an East Coast example. Like, well, she's a dumb idiot, but yeah, what about her? <laughs> yeah, well, I I don't know. Would you would you, who would you rather be sitting next to at a comedy show? AOC or Mitch McConnell? Neither. I bet you they both suck. Though. But like, I bet you they both suck. Like, but they, both, they could both suck. Like, they, one doesn't have to be better. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, neither. I'd rather sit next to my fucking uh, my dead fucking grandfather. Like, <laughs> I, I guess that's a better time. I guarantee it. Like, they suck. They both would be because if I make because she would laugh at like yes queen comedy, but she won't laugh at my comedy. Okay, but you're saying you're saying that the, so you are trying to make the case though that the right wing of the Socialist Party of America has a better sense of humor. Than as a, as a, as a vague, right? I say as a vague, I, as a vague hole, as a vague hole. But the MAGA people, the hardcore MAGA people, do not like they're pretty hard. <laughs> like they're pretty serious. Like a lot of the you know uh, this is my favorite. Pro oh, these are the profile pictures of all the MAGA guys. Ready. 
<laughs> in cars that's that's their profile sunglasses with a hat in their car of a selfie uh, that's all their profile they will give me shit if i shit on trump and shit like that but if you if i just bullshit if i just fuck around with a conservative who's not like a super hard righty i seem they seem to be more way more easier to go with, fuck with but especially like on on twitter even a vague joke that's not really aimed at anybody if I start looking at profiles who attack me, the profiles are all she, her, he, him, <laughs> they, them. It's not too many magas. You know what I'm saying? It's just it's just this, this, the nature of the game, dude. I don't know. I'm just being honest. This is how it turns out. Yeah, I just I don't I, I I mean I get that it's somewhat subjective, but I just don't think it's fair to say either the left or right is more funny than than the other in American politics. Fair. I mean, I, both- I, I just, yeah. Totally, they're both easy to make fun of. They're both sure. totally ridiculable. Uh, you know that, that you can make fun of them for all of the politically correct nonsense, and sure. you know the, 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 their joke, like their joke police from the left and the right. You know, like oh, yeah. uh, you know the the, the 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 joke police on the right will say, "Well, you can't joke about the troops or nine eleven or police," and on the left, or the, the well, you can't joke about transgender women and. You can't well, dude, joke yeah. about gender I mean, reassignments. <laughs> hey, I used to have this bit, and I'll, I'll tell you the bit because I retired the fucking bit. I'll, I'll tell you the premise of the bit. It, 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 and this is why I hate comedy. <laughs> because if, if you listen to the idea of this bit, it's not about trans people. It's about the doctor. So my the premise of my bit was I was like, hey, do you guys think – I think the very first doctor – to ever come up with the idea of gender reassignment surgery was probably a sociopath, right? Because it was so, like, it was so foreign and new at the time, right? You had to think, like, yeah. go back to the time of it. And I'm like, what was that doctor doing? Like, during medical school, they're all sitting around about to graduate. And one guy was like, I want to work with the brain. One guy's like, I want to work with the heart. Like, Frank, what do you want to do? He's like, I want to experiment with dicks and vaginas. It's like, what? <laughs> <laughs> it's like, and you're like, what do you mean? You want to, like, you want to like help people? He's like, <laughs> I want to experiment with dicks and vaginas. It's like, like that guy was probably crazy. Not saying that if you do that surgery, you're crazy. I'm just saying the doctor to come up with that probably was fucking crazy. But I would do that, and people would just get hung up on the fact that I was calling trans people crazy. I'm like, I'm not. I'm calling the doctor to think of it fucking out out of the box. That's the bit, right? But people hear trans and crazy in the same sentence, and they're like. You're transphobic. I'm like, first of all, I'm pretty sure a trans person blew me under the guise of a, of a trick in AC or a, a threesome one time. All right. So I actually pretty sure I fucking won't blew me. Also, I've dressed up to transform before. So fuck you. I'm up on the edge of this. All right. So I get to say this. I don't want to. What, does anybody else get blown by a tranny? Trick, trickily? No. That's not a word, but I made it up. <laughs> Yeah, I was having a threesome one time in AC back when I was 21 years old, and it was with for sure a real woman because I had sex with that person. And then the other person never took off their pants, and I'm pretty sure they had a dick. And they blew me, and they never said, like, hey, I'm a trans person. Is that cool, by the way? I was like, it's fine, whatever. But they never they never brought it up. They never addressed it. <laughs> it was under the guise of two women, right? I'm not complaining about it. Life happens. You move on. <laughs> Uh, I, I assume you didn't tell the police department this in your application. No, it's all done now, though, so we're good. <laughs> if anything, I kind of got sexually assaulted. Really, if you think about it. <laughs> and you're not allowed to joke about that either. That's true. I'm not, yeah, I'm not allowed to joke about my own kind of sexual assault, <laughs> which it kind of was, kind of. But I'm fine with it. Like, I don't care. So, I, I mean, I, one of the things I, I thought we were going to end up talking about more is, you know, like, what does it mean to be not just a comedian, but a libertarian comedian? Uh, you know? like, they're, they're really, there there aren't, like, I, I, Dave Smith is the Dave only Smith, other one. Robbie Bernstein. I, I know Robbie uh, a little bit. I don't know him super well, but I know Robbie a little bit. I don't know Dave. Uh, I was supposed to meet Dave back in fucking March. COVID. And, and Sam Tripoli, you know, Tinfoil Hat Podcast, yeah. a friend of mine. He's he he doesn't, you know, readily identify as libertarian, but he's 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 there. Pretty much, you know? right? Yeah, pretty much. Um, um but 
Me? <laughs> that's like yeah, right. I mean, that's so, but do you, I mean, do you do you does one does it help to even identify like to identify as a libertarian comedian? Obviously, that's going to slow you down in some way. When, when when you lost service, I was actually saying I don't do political comedy because I'm not good enough. Like I was saying, Dave Smith's great at it. I'm not. I can't do that. Like he can. He's great at it. But like I, I, when I say I'm a libertarian comic, in times like this, I do. When I'm doing libertarian podcast or any political podcast, I'd be like, I'm a libertarian because I want people to know where I come from. Like, yes, I'm a comic, but I'm not like a liberal comic, and I'm also not like a conservative comic. I'm a libertarian comic. I have my own set of beliefs. I'm I don't fall into this trap. So you can't call me a dumb Trump guy, and you can't call me an SJW, right? <laughs> so like, mm-hmm. I'm my own thing. I'm a libertarian comic. No, if I'm just doing a comedy podcast, no, there's no point, right? Like, hey, comedian Adam Nutter here. That's it. There's no point to. But I, I do like to v- value myself in that way of, of that mindset. So, yeah, I do want to make sure that in times like this, it's like, yes, I'm a libertarian comedian. Yes, <laughs> for sure. So and then, is and there, my wife, the Republican behind me, just walked in. <laughs> <laughs> so is there a role like and, and you know, I I've been tempted to to. To just say like you know what all right let's let's give direct comedy a try and and go do some open mics and you should I've had I've had some speaking events that have been like that where you know I've gone and at one of my own events or something hey I'm gonna get up and I, I got to do five minutes to say X Y and Z and I had it perfectly composed and just connected with the audience perfectly and at the end of it I'm like shit that was funnier than most comedy open mic sets. You know, I could do this. That's probably and, true. And I, I know there, there's a huge talent pool within the libertarian movement where, you know, we're able to laugh at things that a lot of people aren't able to laugh at. There are a lot of great speakers. You know, would you encourage more libertarians to step into that arena? Yes, I encourage everybody. Like anybody who goes like, I thought about trying to stand up. I go do it. For real. I really do mean that. Like, try it. You might suck and it might not be for you. And I'll tell you, I'm like, it probably isn't for you. <laughs> but like try it because like you don't know like no one knows like i do like again when i first started i remember i got one laugh in my first open mic and i was like dude i am great <laughs> <laughs> and then you bomb for two years you're like oh okay this is how it goes got it but then you get better like you know but like you will either love it or hate it like the fact like okay when covid happened when covid first hit and we got that first month off i was like you know what i actually needed a break i was kind of running myself you know pretty hard my wife was like slow down like i don't see you enough i was i was out a lot so the month was like you know what kind of a good break actually fine but then after that month i was like huh i kind of i'm missing it and also i'm getting i feel like i'm getting rusty like i forgot my joke dude when i did my show two weeks ago i was like what are my jokes (laughs) i was like how do i how do i even tell like what the fuck how do i what's that punchline but then as soon as I – I was legitimately – my stomach was ner- – I was nervous like I was the first time I was ever doing comedy. I was nervous. And I was like, oh, man, I'm going to eat so many dicks right now. <laughs> like I thought I was going to just be awful. And as soon as I grabbed the mic, nerves dropped, and I was right back into like my comfort zone. And it was pretty wild. I was like, all right. And then it felt good just to get out there and like – just riff and kind of, you know, do a little crowd work up front and then just get into my set. And that's a great feeling. And like, if you do speaking engagements and if you feel like great afterwards, if you like crush a good speech, do comedy. Cause it feels better. I guarantee what I do feels better than your speech. <laughs> Even though your speech is more important, <laughs> the feeling I have after a good set, I guarantee is better than the feeling you're the high, the high is better. No, I've, I've, I've known that. Yeah. I've, I've known that feeling. Yeah. I, I, I wonder now, like, is you can't say, oh, wait, well, if you, if you do this now, where are you going to go? Is, it, is there, like, you can't, you can't just go to a bar. Are, are, are comedy open mics still even happening? They're either virtual or they're, like, outside and terrible or whatever. Oh, okay, so, like, the, the very next thing I'm definitely doing is uh, – Actually, this is a good plug for myself. August 22nd, uh, the comics at Mohegan Sun in Connecticut. Uh, I'm doing a show there. That's it. That's the next thing I have. So, like, and that's at a casino. No one else is doing shit, man. Like, if they are, it's like 
you know, small rooms and I mean, everyone is trying to get into a show right now. So where do I fall on that list? I don't know. I mean, my buddy reached out to me. Uh, he, I think he's booking a show out in PA soon. So that might be my only second show, but that's I'm, I'm getting nothing. Like no one's getting anything. It's rough. So I don't know. I don't know, man. Like I have no idea. My wife keeps going like, is comedy done for you? Or like, what are you doing? <laughs> I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> like it's, it's just, these governors, man, too much goddamn power. Like Pennsylvania, our governor is just every every time he just wants, he's like, you know what? I'm gonna roll it back again, and then no one does anything about it. And I'm like, you're a tyrant. <laughs> what you're doing is illegal. The Tenth Amendment? No, we're not gonna ever enact the Tenth Amendment. I thought that was a thing. No, okay. It's like, correct me if Chris, correct me if I'm wrong. The Tenth Amendment gives the the states the power from the federal government. But it also gives the people the power from the states, right? Allegedly. But where is that? <laughs> can we use that? Can, can no. we enact the 10th Amendment in the state of Pennsylvania and be like, you know what? What you're doing now is unconstitutional. I don't want to listen to you. But apparently we're not doing that. Well, you know, I, I don't know if you're familiar, Adam, but this is a big part of what we're doing here in Gardenia and saying that, you know, we're going to take a whole year to, to – plan and, and do this properly on Independence Day this year. I announced that we will be declaring independence properly, fully. I know. Uh, better I, than I, the, the American Revolution. Better I, than Chaz Chop. Better better oh than any God. other secession in human history. More deliberate and thoughtful and planned. And and, and unfortunately, I think that's what it's going to come to. It, you're, you're not going to get uh, reform. You know, the system... You know, the people who, who share our perspective, who are dismissive of political activism, are, are, are really powerfully right about one thing in their criticism, which is that in many ways, this system is beyond reform, beyond it really reform. Is, man. It really is. And I don't, I don't think that disqualifies political action, obviously, because you can do politics for the purpose of just dismantling as much as you can. Uh, which is which is often the libertarian approach, but uh, it, it's it's got to have it, there's got to be some role of engage some way to engage in that bigger conversation, and whether it's uh, libertarians you know as, as a movement learning how to be funnier and inject themselves in the conversation more, or as politicians be more effective because we bring a little levity to the situation. I, I think you can't avoid that. You know, we have to engage to change society. We have to talk to people. We have to connect with people. We have to be heard. And the funnier you can be, the more likely you are to be heard. I, I agree. I was going to say uh, two things about Gardini. I was going to say, listen, if you just want to start a sex cult, just start a sex cult. You don't have to do it under the guise of liberty, all right? Just be like, I want to fuck things, all right? <laughs> Secondly, don't let it turn Man, out I'm like not, I'm not, I haven't. I'm not done with people. I haven't moved on to things yet. Give us a while. <laughs> You'll get there. I'm telling you, you start with sex cult, you start with people, then it goes to things. <laughs> and then, um, no, people, animals, things. Come on. True. You, yeah, you want to start with living things and then just inanimate <laughs> things. You're right. I'm sorry. I skipped a step. <laughs> and then don't hey, let it sound like Waco, though. This is the flashlight Joe Rogan experience, okay? I'll let them sponsor me. Sponsor nurse's yeah. words. I'll, I'll take flashlight all day. Are you shitting me? <laughs> no, but that, I mean, listen, that, that would be sick. Just to start like a, like a thing like that. But then you always have the fear of the government being like, I don't like the freedom over there and like Wacoing you. You know, it's like, <laughs> I mean, the thing with Waco too, it's, this is a libertarian problem I have with fellow libertarians. They like, we defend Waco. It's like, yeah, I defend Waco, but don't defend David Crush because he was like fucking kids. Like, can we stop. Like making that guy like he was a fucking See, like this, a, like a leader, right. like, you know what I'm saying? This is the difference that, with what we're doing with Gardenia. We have less kids. I mean, no, I'm <laughs> sorry, no, we have uh, no, we have no. In Gardenia, we uh, no, we're no, obviously what we're doing in Gardenia is not like creating a secret space and then demanding sovereignty. We're creating something that is totally open and public and transparent. Right. And I mean, not like that. individuals who live here have their right to privacy, obviously. But as a whole, what are we doing here? It's all out there. It's all public. It's all transparent. You know, and, and why do we know 
the story of Waco a lot more than, say, the story of Ruby Ridge. Right. It was easier to demonize David Koresh than, you know, a woman holding a child getting shot by government agent. Yeah, fucking snipe by an FBI agent. Right. Right. You know, and, and I one of my favorite memes coming out recently was it's, it's a bunch of cops at a press conference. And then it's and, and they're all wearing masks except for the one at the podium. And the caption is, we just want you to treat us with the same respect and dignity that we treat you with. And then the, the bottom half of the meme is. Waco burning in the background and a kid going, mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, okay, yeah, um, man, <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, Ruby Ridge was was way worse than Waco because that guy literally did nothing wrong besides like fuck the guy. I mean, like Duncan Lemp, right? We we were all talking about Duncan Lemp, and no one. I've enlightened so many people on Duncan Lemp, dude. So many people no they have no idea who Duncan Lemp is. I was like, that's because it was a white kid. Doesn't push the narrative, but I was like, essentially. The state executed an American citizen because the American citizen didn't like the government. On because because an American citizen said fuck the government on Twitter, so the state executed him. If that's the bare bones of it, and if you don't think that's psychotic, man, then you're a lost soul, and I don't know what to tell you. Yeah, I want to find a way to make people laugh about shit like that. It's really hard to laugh. It's about. hard. It's fucking hard. It, it, it's hard to be like. Uh, and then they shot him when he was sleeping through his window. <laughs> All right, what else is going on? It's like, <laughs> it's like, what? What do you say about that, man? It's like, it's, it's psychotic. And then they won't release the body cam footage. That's not suspicious. Every time I watch the Daniel Shaver right in the Arizona where they shot the kid crawling. That's yeah, so hotel, sad. hotel hallway. Yeah, Dude, that kid's literally crying, and that cop is such a pussy. Like again, like I know how to fight again. So like, t- I, so take everything what they say with a grain of salt. But like, I could fuck up ninety eight percent of cops in this country, like hand to hand combat, easily. Not, not. It's not. It's not. I'm not bragging. I'm not saying I'm a tough guy. I'm just saying with my training and my combat skills, I could fuck up. 98% of cops in the job in this country because they don't train jujitsu, do jujitsu. That's what every police academy should do. It should be every day, every recruit does two hours of jujitsu every single day. No, 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 Adam, you still got it wrong. You still got it wrong. Listen, Although, hold on. No. You know I want to abolish all this shit. It's, but I'm saying <laughs> under the guise of what we have now, right? No, no, even then. They train them for two hours in de-escalation and conflict resolution. But do that too. But you do that too. Because here's the thing, dude. I, I did do that job. There are people. You just show up and it's like it's a fight. They're just going to start punching you. There's no con. There's no been like, hey, man, don't punch me in the face. You're already getting attacked. So what's better now? If you're already getting attacked, do you want to use a gun or a taser or just get the guy in a nice little arm bar, have his arm locked up, cuff him? Yeah, well, you know, I, I'm, I, I'm with you, and, and I would want to analyze this through the lens of if you had community-based or private security, you know, what would they have? But, but, but yeah, then, but we're, we're, and I, and I tell you, oh, I'm sorry, but, but we're, again, this is, this is a, this is a, we're talking about society where literally no one's gonna fight anybody. That's not gonna happen. <laughs> it, it, private, well, okay, police, oh, okay, private well, security. Okay, but, but even then, even then, tasers, like I, how. Uh, and, and this is my little nerdy anti-gun point in that, like, I'm all pro-gun rights. You know, nobody oh, can course. really question me on that. But, it, but it's deeper than gun rights. It's property rights. And even with property rights, it's deeper than that, as in, why do we care about this? Because we care about humanity. We love our fellow human beings. We want to make the world a better place, a more peaceful, free, harmonious place. So we're eventually going to get to the point with technology where carrying a gun is not acceptable for self-defense or for law enforcement because we have tasers that are more effective. They, yeah. And, oh, by the way, they don't kill people or destroy bodies. You can shoot someone in the pinky toe and disable them entirely True. without having to take their Except life. Except when tasers don't work. <laughs> when, okay, but when, when do they'll get... No, but we'd have that investment in that technology that we could... We have the capability, man. Sure. Like, we're just... To make them reliable, we could. We already have the technology to make tasers more effective than guns in 90% of the situations that cops use guns for. Of course. You know, there's the rare situation where a, a gun is even today really justified 
in in defense when when we have but th- we'd have that better technology guns would essentially become obsolete anyway i'm just see this is the this is the stuff i, I gotta figure out how to be funny when i'm like no no i'm right about everything i know i'm right about everything because i'm a libertarian and i thought this through without the silly emotional hang-ups that you statists have so laugh with me right which is the same thing I have. Well, I go through, right? <laughs> which is which is why when two libertarians are arguing about the same thing, it's like we both think the same thing. It's like, well, we're libertarian. Which is, but by the way, I do agree with you in the grand scheme of things. But I'm thinking practicality right now, which is they're not going to do that. They're not going to invest money into taser technology. There's not. So I'm thinking right now is like, sure, let's make that a goal. But let me let me try to save lives right now. And my way of doing that right now is we talk the escalation. Uh, training we talk uh all, all that shit you just said but let's be honest dude there are, and there are videos like there you know there's a guy stabbing people in a fucking bar and the cops show up and he's like i'm gonna stab you it's like there's no and what do you do you either shoot that guy tase that guy or you fucking take that guy down you fucking physically stop him right well you should shoot him probably gonna kill him okay taser might not work and now you, you you're, you're risking more people getting stabbed and are you gonna risk tackling this guy with a knife now let's say he doesn't have a knife and he's just walking around just fighting people and you show up again doesn't matter state state police private police private security doesn't matter whatever box you want to put the guy stopping the assault happening in okay that guy whose job it is guy or woman's job it is to come and stop that assault from happening if that perpetrator doesn't want to stop and doesn't want to get cuffed by whatever entity is cuffing him what do you do so you either use violent force, which is you shoot him, right? Or you use jujitsu and you fucking take him down. You don't have to choke him out because there's plenty of jujitsu without chokeholds. <laughs> you get him right. down, you get him in a leg lock, you get him in an ankle lock, you get him in an arm bar. You get him in something where it will stop him. You could get other people to grab him and then cuff him. It immediately elim- eliminates a, 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 a fucking a violent use of a, 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 like a, a baton or a very violent use of force. So, so this is where I, I mean, I, I, I'm inclined to disagree with you on the gun versus taser analysis in that situation because if if I'm a club owner, or bar owner, and I want my, and I want my security to be able to respond with force to a situation like that, do I want them firing bullets into a crowded room or do I want them firing a taser or a bunch of tasers? I would want overwhelming tasers to say i mean i might want, <laughs> I, might want pepper spray. I want <laughs> i want pepper spray to come out of the sprinklers from the ceiling like you know just uh everybody's fucked everybody run out of the building you're all pepper sprayed okay, now i'll give Nobody's you an example hurting anybody because you can't see each other tough I'll, shit right i'll, I'll give you an example when tasers don't work though if you have a remember those puff jackets from like the 90s and 2000s oh that's a defense against a taser because i guy, swear dude the, those won't penetrate them okay and also okay, I'm, also I'm, hold on, right, one, fair, one more so, thing one more thing also both those nodes have to connect and they don't always shoot straight because it's physics right so if they shoot if it hits me in the wall it won't work okay so there's there there are problems with today's Yes, technology for sure. <laughs> Although pepper spray, pepper spray doesn't have that problem. Pepper spray is just a nice. So nice want to hear some fun fact about pepper spray? Oh. Some people are absolutely immune to pepper spray. <laughs> like actually, medically, like it will not work on them. Okay, so you have a combination pepper spray with CS gas in it <laughs> and tasers. No, but, so, but, but but either way, I'll tell you, Adam. Adam, this is a dumb conversation for you and me to be having because on our part, it's speculative. It and is. the way that this is actually going to be figured out by society, which is so beautiful, and 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 I don't know how to make a joke about this because it's such a beautiful, serious, intellectual point. I, I, I I'm as I'm I'm trying to come up with a joke for this, but no, how's how are we going to figure this out? It's going to be by insurance and actuarial tables sure. and and actual statistics that say, well, hey, if you use a gun in this situation, this is what happens most of the time. If you use a taser or pepper spray, this is what happens, and therefore. Here's your insurance plan, and here's who you're going to hire for security and what policies they're going to have. And if you want to say that your security guards are only going to carry guns and not pepper spray or tasers, well, you're going to you're going to have to have a higher life insurance liability right. policy for your business, and your customers would probably rather go to a business where there's a non-lethal option for security. And that's how this balance is going to get figured. I mean, out, that's right? like private policing, right? It's like People people argue with me that all the time. I'm like, you know how easy it would be? 
<laughs> it, would be, it would solve so many issues. And people are like, but but what about corruption? I'm sick of that too. I'm like, as opposed to the corruption now, like, what do you mean? <laughs> like, there's no corruption now. Well, this are, kind of are you right there? The libertarian counterpoint is super easy on that to say, well, look, if, if a politician screws up, what happens? If you're lucky, you can change them in a regularly scheduled election two years from now. Mm. Whereas if someone in, the, in private industry screws up, take your business somewhere else where you can fire them right now. I say all the time, I go, if Nabisco's and Domino's both started a police department and Nabisco police department fucking monitored Newtown where I live and they were just fucking people up. We would be like, well, we're going to fire your contract. We're going to eliminate your contract, and we're going to hire Domino's Place Department, who doesn't fuck us up. In fact, they bring us pizzas. <laughs> you know, and, like, and Domino's fixes potholes now, too. Bam. <laughs> Dose. <laughs> Two birds, one stone. But that's how it works. It's that simple. Well, hey, Adam, it's been a lot of fun talking. You got a few more headlines I want to get to before we wrap up the yeah, show. Absolutely. But hey, I, I really want to, I want to, I want to talk more, too, about. Uh, you know, your podcast and what it's about. So if you want to get in a plug, please, Nerds With Words. It's YouTube.com slash Nerds With Words. Instagram yeah. and Twitter and Facebook, NWWcast. Yeah, and uh, if you guys are so inclined to check out our Patreon for a little extra dollar, <laughs> a little $1 gets you access to all of our extra videos and content. So uh, Patreon.com slash Nerds With Words. And again, follow me at Adam Nutter on Twitter and Instagram. Thank you very much, everybody. Awesome. Thanks so much. <laughs>